So for today's presentation, it's simply going to be all about the HTC VI uh, camera product intro introduction. And uh, as we know that HTC VI practically means a high definition composite video interface, uh, whereby uh, we have different kinds of data that can be sent through uh, one cable, such as, for example, audio, video, and some other meaningful information through a single cable. So for today's training, we're going to be discussing about uh, the different technologies and the different products that we have part of this HTC VI. Um, So let's take a look at uh, today's content, then we move on from uh, this point. So HTC VI has a wide variety of uh, different products, uh, which can be used at different levels. And uh, based on the different platforms that we have for HTC VI, we have three major categories of uh, the platforms. That is, uh, we have uh, the, light, the light series, or the entry series, we have the pro series and the high end uh, products. So we have three types of uh, products that you're going to be describing based on those two or uh, three platforms, the light series, the pro series and um, the high end products. So in this case, all these are basically going to be in those three categories that we've mentioned. <clears throat> So we'll start with the Pro Series, then take a look at uh, the Light Series, then finish up with the High End Series uh, alongside some micro-sized uh, series. So the Pro Series, uh, simply, they're meant to stimulate that increased demand for the high definition video surveillance. And uh, in this case, uh, this Pro Series comes with uh, three key uh, information embedded uh, to those particular products. So one key element of this Pro Series product is basically to offer you that superior clarity and uh, rich details in terms of uh, better uh, displays in terms of the different resolutions that each and every of these uh, Pro Series uh, carry. So alongside the superior clarity and rich details, again, this will offer you the wide dynamic range. So implying that uh, this product will give you a wider angle of view uh, which is uh, more or less similar to the human's um, your vision angle, that is. Then uh, from the WDR, then again, this supports the 3D uh, noise reduction. So meaning that, uh, basically, for example, during the night, whatever kind of output you're going to be seeing on the display screens will actually be uh, finer. It's, it's not going to have those uh, tiny particles that you usually see on the screens during the night. Then the good thing is that this Pro Series, they, uh, they actually come with um, a built-in mic just to enable you to do some broadcast quality of audio um, from what has been captured from the different scenes within where the, that particular camera has uh, been installed. So, so they have uh, this high reliability and flexibility that is basically the different individuals outside there uh, require mostly. So alongside some of these key features here, to uh, facilitate to have that superior clarity during the night or during the day, uh, this camera supports what we call the starlight feature for low illumination. Okay. So if in, in the event that you have this product installed in places where we, uh, it doesn't have enough or maybe adequate lighting, uh, the starlight function will ensure that the camera attracts a lot of light inside it just to ensure that uh, it produces this superior uh, clarity clarity image that is so take a look at some more information about the pro series so the pro series comes with uh four resolution types um we have the two megapixels four megapixels five megapixels and eight megapixels or the 4k resolution um resolution that is Now, when you start with, let's say, for example, from left to right, going upwards. So this Pro Series products comes with different functions. 
And uh, the two major functions that this particular product supports are the starlight functions and the full color functions. So starlight function, the sense that that's basically a function that will enable the camera to give better image qualities during the night or places where we have uh, inadequate uh, sources of light. So but you can take a look at some of these implications of having these uh, models that we have here. Uh, so we have, let's say, for example, 2249. Uh, this is a full color. Uh, product from the pro series so this is a pro series that's a platform uh a pro series platform two megapixels uh this has this for them this is um the fourth generation and this is what we call the full color functions the nine at this particular end the the fourth value this is the full color function uh for this particular product series so this again we have a pro series then this is uh, two megapixels, uh, fourth generation. Then this is a W a starlight function, WDR or starlight function for low illumination. So when you come to this other product here, uh, I think this should be on a different. This should be on a different um, category of platform. This is a high end platform, but it's still okay to get to learn about it. So we have a high end platform. Two megapixels, third generation. Then we have either WDR or starlight function for this. So all these two megapixels will actually give you a picture rate with twenty-five to thirty frames per second. So implying that there are kind of images or videos that are going to the the camera is going to produce to you will actually going to produce the images in um, the real for. Um, Real time, uh, real time motion videos. So implying that uh, we have a lot of image quality in terms of uh, what the camera has has captured. So we have different number of frames per second. Let's present the maximum is basically thirty frames per second. So a camera that produces thirty frames per second. So that implies that we have so many uh, like pages that contain more key details about what the camera has captured at the other end. So to move to the four megapixels. Uh, this again provides a resolution of four megapixels at a rate of 25 to 30 frames per second, implying that now this will provide clear details uh, about the images or the videos with complete information. So this will give you uh, real-time uh, video motions. So this only comes with this particular series, 2402. These are the Pro Series. Four megapixels. This is the first generation. Then we have uh, starlight uh, function, starlight plus function. The the five megapixel category of it within the pro series uh, family we have five megapixels. And this five megapixels, the maximum frames per second is actually twenty five uh, frames per second. So this will provide two functions. One function is basically the full color function, the nine at the end here. Then again we have uh, the starlight function one at the end here so this is a starlight no no starlight but actually the pro series platform the pro platform five megapixels first generation uh full color function so on this other end again for the starlight uh, this supports uh, the pro series five megapixels first generation then this is uh, the starlight function for low illumination. So alongside that, uh, more other categories for this in terms of uh, the product resolution, we have the following 4K resolution or 8 megapixels at 15 frames per second. So um, on this other end, uh, for the 4K, we don't have uh, the full color. We only have ones that support different functions. So for example, uh, the starlight function, Give me one minute. Oh, 
Sorry for that. Just confirming something from my end. So we have um, this is a pro platform, eight megapixels, first generation. Then this is uh, the Starlight uh, function, Starlight Plus function. Uh, this is uh, the high end. Again, this is not supposed to be within the pro series, but it's still okay to get to learn more about this. This is a high end product, uh, eight megapixels, first generation. And this is now the sensor size. That's the four thirds. Uh, inch sensor size, so implying that is simply wide enough to capture enough lighting to the camera to generate those colorful images. So similar to this, uh, eight megapixels, first generation, then there's a starlight uh, function from this other end. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these comparison spe uh, spec uh, specification comparisons for uh, the Pro Series, where we have 2802 two series, 2509, 2501, 2402, then 2249 series, and all the way to 2241 uh, different series. So the maximum resolution for this series is 8 megapixels. Here we have 5 megapixels. Uh, 5 megapixels again. Here we have 4 megapixels. 2 megapixels, 2 megapixels again. So realize on this, we have one this one common value, the first value. This is the second value within the platform category. So this is a pro series product with first generation. The first generation uh, CMOS. Then this is uh, the function. We have uh, 5 megapixels with the full color functions, uh, WDR functions. The WDR function is a starlight function. So this uh, have been mixed up a little bit. So apart from that, we have some other more key information here based on the, the frame rate, the minimum illumination, the WDR, the noise reduction, the function of starlight and audio. Hmm? So uh, we need five megapixels. We have um, 15 frames per second at this 4K resolution. Uh, six megapixels provide 20 frames per second. Uh, four megapixels provide maximum uh, range between 25 to 30 frames per second. So you can compare with uh, these other series, mm -hmm. but uh, we have yes, for two megapixels, that is. So when it comes to um, the minimum illumination, in this scan we have uh, different uh, functions that have different lux values for illumination. So here we have uh, 0 0.001 lux value with an F value of 1.5. Uh, we have for 2501, have a lux value of uh, an F value of 1.0. So this will detect the size of the aperture window for that particular uh, camera that will allow the camera to attract more light into it. So that can convert the light signals into electrical signals just to ensure that produce those uh, colorful images. So the higher, the bigger the F value, the the smaller we are going to you're going to get the differences in terms of uh, the apertures decreasing but uh the bigger the sorry the smaller the f value the bigger the aperture for that particular camera now if this value keeps on increasing then the size of the window the shutter window for that particular camera will keep on decreasing so meaning that it will not attract enough light into the camera to generate those uh, better image qualities now, on this WDR function or the wide dynamic range function, all these uh, series uh, will support uh, 120 in decibels instead, uh, apart from 2441. So, implying that this will give just the normal wide angle view or the dynamic range uh, for the images 
but this will have a better um a better image vm so the 120s are basically are going to give you um a dynamic range that is comparable to the human eye but to take a look at this this is a little bit enhanced compared to the 120 so this is a, going to give you much better um dynamic range in terms of how the images will be generated by these cameras then we have the noise reduction all support the 3d noise reduction so implying that in the event it's uh, during the night and uh, the ir is basically um doing its function of ensuring that you can still see the images uh, during the night though in black and white so the images are basically going to be smoother because if this the 3d noise reduction is enabled the images are basically going to be uh, finer and smoother without those um, light particles that usually get to see the screen so when it comes to um, the illumination uh, functions for example the starlight this 2802 uses a starlight function this uh, 2509 will use the full color function because of this nine here. Uh, we have 2501, 2402 uh, will use the starlight function for illumination, low illumination functions. Then we have 2249, that's the full color, and this for starlight function. Then we have the audio. There is a basically the digital audio over the coaxial. All, all this supports digital audio over the coaxial uh, cables. So uh, since all support, they all support the inbuilt mic, we find that now they can pick different audio sources uh, from different environments just to ensure that they can be stored uh, for future references. Or maybe, for example, storage for the users to get to capture the details uh, either within the same place or remotely placed. So this is a, the digital audio over the coaxial cable. So on that particular cable, this will actually... will enable you to have those quality high definition uh, audio signals. So more functions to this. <clears throat> We have um, eight megapixels. Uh, all these are basically eight megapixels and be except uh, 32, 31. Uh, they have different frames per second as per different uh, resolutions. The 4K resolution gives us this. Uh, this is not supposed to be here. So this as well, this is supposed to be somewhere else. Sorry for that. Then two megapixels at 25 to 30 frames per second, uh, 4K at 15 frames per second. So for these two series, so for uh, minimum illumination, we have different F values. Uh, this is basically going to ensure that the camera generates enough uh, color shadings for each and every object that has been captured. Then this case now here we use, <coughs> sorry. So this uses the ultra, uh, ultra WDR. This is a 140 dB, this ultra WDR. 120 is basically the true WDR, then this one, sorry, 130 is the true WDR, and 120 is basically just that uh, basic um, dynamic range for this part, particular camera. Not the basic, but actually the default, uh, default wide dynamic range for this particular uh, cameras. So on the, when it comes to the noise reduction, they use the 3D noise reduction for all, just to ensure that uh, the images in black and white will always provide uh, better smooth quality images so these three do not support audio at all they don't support the audio uh, unlike the previous series whereby they support the digital audio over the coaxial cable So let's take a look at um, the light series. So from the pro series, we go to the light series, then take a look at higher advanced uh, products. 
So the light series are basically suitable for users who just want high quality at reasonable price. Um, this kind of product features a superior cost performance, performance suitable for residents and the, the small medium business platforms. And uh, the series offers a wide range of resolutions with the full color starlight and general options to fit every scenario for the different market demands. So the compact design and easy to install feature makes it suitable for medium business, medium businesses applications. So the key highlight for this slide series is basically high performance and reliability. Uh, they have different compact designs and they're very easy to install. Alongside that, they all support built-in mic to ensure that you can broadcast quality uh, audio that has been captured from the surroundings where the camera has been uh, installed. So these are dif different uh, differences, shapes, and looks for these light series. We have uh, bullets, we have the eyeballs, we have the domes. So with the bullets, we have different shapes just to facilitate different environments that they can be uh, installed. So on this, just like um, the Pro Series, we have different types of resolutions supported for these light series products. So we have a light series product from two megapixels, five megapixels to uh, 4K resolutions with different uh, frames per second. And in this case, on the light series, it supports different types of functions. We have the smart dual lighting functions, we have the starlight functions, and again, we have the full light, the full color functions. So let's begin from this uh, point, from the low end resolution to the high end resolution uh, product for the light series. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have uh, one, the 1200 series, then we have the 1200 with IL, that is uh, the IR and the LED series that supports the smart dual lighting. We have 12, 1209, that's this uh, full color series. We have 1231 that uses the starlight function for low illumination uh, 1239 against the full color then again we have another variant that is a 1239 with the il uh, series that is basically the smart dual lighting so we're going to take a look at the functions of this the implications of having a camera that has a smart dual lighting so this is for the five megapixels when you go to the sorry two megapixels when you go to the five megapixels here that uh, give you output at 25 frames per second uh, we have 1500 series 1500 il series we have 1509 full color series and 1509 il series that's smart dual light uh, series so uh, all those are basically going to be um, you can actually identify them based on the functions and again depends on the resolution of the product. So for the 4K, we have two types. We have 4K that gives a display at 15 frames per second. Then again, we have another 4K that provide a display resolution at 25 to 30 frames per second. So between the two, the one at the bottom is that supposed 25 frames per second gives uh, real time uh, videos. So this is not real time at all because of the number of frames per second. So the categories for the 4K, we have 1800 series, 1801 Starlight supported uh, series. Then we have 1801 IL supported Smart Dual Light series. Then we have 1809 series that supports a full color function. So you can see by this value here, that is nine. So one, just to show that this is a light entry, eight here, the second value, this is a, the resolution of the product, this is the generation, and this is the function uh, supported uh, for the product itself. So similarly to this, this is a first, if the light series, we have five megapixels, first generation, then we have different kind of uh, functions that we have here. So this is, Uh, full color functions for the two. 
So you can compare some of the uh, models for the light series based on, let's say the 4K resolution. The maximum resolution is basically 4K because here we have an eight. Uh, this supports, this is a full color. This supports starlight function with at the same time, the smart dual lighting functions. This is a starlight function for A01. And this is basically a uh, zero zero uh, series, though it still supports the 4K uh, resolution. We have different ranges of uh, different ranges of um, the frames, the frame rates supported by this uh, product here. We have the different levels of illumination based on uh, the different lux values. Then on the wide dynamic range. These all supports the first three will support um, the default wide dynamic range features, though this will support the dynamic wide dynamic range. So when it comes to the noise reduction, the first three will support uh, elevated uh, noise reduction features or options. Uh, while the 1800 series will support uh, 2D noise reduction. So we have the starlight function, full color for this product. This is a smart dual lighting because of the IL feature that you see here. This is a starlight function again because of this one. And this these functions are not applicable to this, though they still give you better image qualities. So with all this, they support uh, digital audio over the coaxial cable. So this can transmit uh, digital audio to the coaxial cable. Uh, among the 1509 um, or maybe the 1500 series, I'll uh, find that now they have different resolutions again, or similar resolution that is, that is a five megapixels for all. What changes basically are uh, the functions. We have the starlight function. This is supposed to be a full color function or a starlight function. Uh, here we have a du smart dual lighting. This is a full color with smart dual lighting. Then here we have uh, just a starlight function. So on uh, on the audio, they all support digital audio over the coaxial cable. So in terms transmission of audio becomes uh, better uh, using this particular series, 1509, 1509, uh, 1500 and 1500 series, we are without IL. So we have, the most common brands, that's the 1239 IL, 1239 series, 1231, 1209, 1200 IL, and 1200 uh, series again. So this will support different uh, frames per second. So all this basically two megapixel by the second value that you can see here, or basically two megapixels. So uh, they bear uh, similar frames per second. Uh, we have uh, different illuminations, minimum illumination uh, functions. That's we have 0 0.001 lux, uh, an addition of zero here supports the LED. So all these are basically going to ensure that the event, let's say we don't have enough lighting in the environment where the cameras are placed, but they still give you better image uh, quality. So we have the smart dual lighting by this IL here full color by this value, starlight by the, the last figure here. And uh, IL again repeated, there's some other standard functions. So all this, again, they support digital audio over the coaxial cable. So meaning that they support, they have built-in mic uh, in, included to these particular cameras. So we have different uh, shades, or maybe different kinds of uh, smart dual lighting cameras. And uh, we have examples here. Uh, just compare between Dawa's product and the competitor's uh, product. So cameras with smart dual lighting, we have uh, the two megapixels, five megapixels and four uh, K resolution. That is a 1801 IL, with this illumination, smart dual illumination with the IL at the end. So um, five megapixels, we have it here. And uh, we have, two megapixels, that's 
1239IL and 1200IL. So the product, the competitors, what they have is basically different models that again support uh, smart door lighting. But these are basically IR cameras and not the full color cameras. When it comes to the product positioning for, for DAO, we have two that two categories. The IR chipset series with smart dual lighting and the full color chipset series with uh, the smart dual lighting. So in this case, all these are basically DAO products, uh, different shapes. We have the bullets, we have the eyeballs at this end, bullets and eyeballs on this other end. The eyeballs with a dome included. So this gives a um, high cost effective they're highly cost effective and uh, again again gives this superior performance in terms of producing high quality images so the current products that are in circulation at the moment we have for oh, five megapixels and the two megapixels that's the 1509 il and 1239 il again so in this case So um, let's proceed on. There's some questions which are thrown. I'm going to answer them uh, towards the end of uh, the training. So you can just throw your questions there. We're going to revisit them again because of time. So in this case, um, this full color chipset um, series that have IR lighting. Now they're basically based on broadly welcome full color, 1239 and 1509. Uh, series whereby this offer has excellent low light performance and again apart from that they have an additional IR lighting that can actually uh, enable the camera to in intelligently switch between the different modes that we have the white light mode uh, the IR mode and the smart dual lighting smart illumination mode that is so in this case since the camera will only uh, use one mode at a time this will end up producing a lot of light pollutions and uh, more ideal application scenarios are basically going to um, to be utilized uh, clearly. So in this case, if we're using the white light, cannot it cannot switch automatically to IR mode. If you choose to have the IR mode by default, it won't automatically change to white light. But you, you configure your camera to switch uh, to have this smart dual illumination mode by default. It will be switching in between these two modes depending on the kind of, let's say, for example, restrictions or the kind of rules that have been set within a different uh, area. Other smart dual lighting cameras uh, at the moment, we have the ones that support, uh, they're basically IR chipsets series. Then again, they have uh, other white light functions. So in this case, we have this number of products for example the 4k series uh, in terms of resolution that's the 1801 il we have the 5 megapixels with this 1500 series with the il function then again we have the 1200 il functions so in this case now these have an additional white light uh, they are cost effective products and again they support the smart door light providing more choices to customers when it comes to presenting uh, the mid to low end IR chipsets besides the high end full color uh, series. So if you have this, you can actually compare this with the full color. So implying that you have a choice to choose either the IR chipsets with the full color function, white light functions or the smart door lighting full color with the IR uh, capability. So depending on the type of requirements your client will want from uh, the two products.
So we have some uh, examples of these smart door lighting cameras that we have here. And uh, they, they have different shapes based on the different uh, services that we have, like um, the new products from 1801 IL series, we have them here. This is a bullet, a high a HTC VI product as a bullet, uh, light entries, eight megapixels of 4K, the first generation, then you have the starlight function. So TLM here, this describes the casing of this particular product, which is a metal, a metal bullet, uh, supports the infrared and the LED, that's the smart door light, and this supports the audio capabilities. So it has an inbuilt mic. So similar case to, to this, uh, this is still a metal. So TLM here is a metal bracket bullet. Uh, CM, this is a metal bullet. You can take a look at its uh, shape. It is slightly smaller than what we have here. Uh, still supports audio and smart dual lighting. So we have an eyeball. <coughs> that's, uh, that's a metallic in terms of casing, metal eyeball supports smart dual lighting and again supports um, inbuilt mic. So we have, uh, this is a, a metal bracket bullet and this is basically a metal bracket um, eyeball. So in terms of casing, this is basically metallic. So we have the 1500. 1500 uh, IL series supports some of the features of this. Again, support in terms of, for example, different casing, uh, similar smart door lighting, and again, support inbuilt uh, mic that we have here. Now, in this case, we have CL function here, uh, casing. We have a metal eyeball. We have an active deterrence uh, bullet. This is an eyeball to a bullet. This is, so there are so many features. Uh, there are so many categories you can get from these particular categories of this smart dual lighting that we have. So it comes, take a look at the hardware between the differences in terms of the hardware between um, Dawa's product with some other competitor uh, products. So in this case, the reason why uh, the reason why this produces a better image quality is simply because of uh, the two uh, white lights and the two IR lights. So in this case, this since this is a smart dual, um, the two IR lights are going to be used during the night just to ensure that at least you can give you better image qualities that are visible with clear details. But in the event, let's say the user wants to get to see the images in color format, uh, the camera will switch automatically from IR to white lights, uh, white lights. So this will end up producing or maybe providing those uh, colorful images or the video produced by that particular camera. So we have dual lighting, dual white lights and dual IR lights. So from the other competitors, you can see they only have one IR and one uh, white light. So ensure I'm making, um, doing the comparison between the two, this will produce better images during the night, at the same time, better images during the day or the night time when you want to view the images in color format. So for indoors, let's say during the night for this IL, 1500 IL and 1509 IL, in terms of clarity and performance, you can take a look at the two. This 1500 IL, 1509 IL again. So these have two differences in terms of um, clarity. Same scene, but two different cameras from these two different uh, series. Yeah. So for other competitors, you can take a look at this. Um, so this product supports the 3D noise reduction. You can see the images are crystal clear. They are smooth again from both ends. But in this case, again, as you try to focus on the content, which is slightly placed far, uh, far placed from where the cameras are, we find that we have some uh, instances, instances of noise that are basically making the images a little bit uh, less clearer.
So places where we have uh, illumination because of it, uh, the dual white light, this is the output you're going to get. Uh, places where we have, let's say for example, uh, maybe during the night where we don't have any kind of illumination uh, with the dual white light and dual IR, this is the kind of output you're going to, be, to generate from the cameras because of the dual um, IR lighting. So for the 1500 IL series, and 1509 IL series alongside the competitor's uh, product. So uh, again, we find that in this end, there's some cases where you have uh, some noise generated, but it's not that, uh, not that too bad. So in this case here, we have this supposed the 3D noise reduction. You can take a look at this. The images are basically crystal clear without any kind of noise generated. So competitors, this other end again, find that. They have instances of noise generated uh, within the image. That, so this is basically the function of the IR without the white light uh, enabled. So we're introducing a different uh, uh, camera product and this is the pan until the pt series within the light series again so this is a new product which is basically uh, included part of the other hdcvi products so we have uh, the pt239 and pt1501 a uh, with the hyphen a at this other end again mm -hmm. So this implies this supports audio. Again, this looks like a cube. Okay, that's A4, uh, the PR cube. So these are for coming brand new PTZ, a PT camera that can rotate with fast pan and tilt speed okay. um, to provide the wide area coverage and get details with a single camera. So you can see we have a single camera here and this can actually uh, can tilt horizontally at the same time can tilt um, vertically at different angles. So this can tilt up to uh, not 360, but roughly closer to 360. This is basically 355 uh, degrees, and this can tilt a 90 degree angle, this other end again. So the main key feature for this product is that it supports uh, either two megapixel or five megapixels. It's full color in nature, has an inbuilt mic to capture audio within uh, the different scenarios then again supports up to um, 130 decibels true wdr which is a little bit higher than the 120 db so this is basically true wdr uh, when it comes to the noise reduction this is uses the uh, the 2d the 3d noise reduction uh, this is a fixed lens it's not a very focal lens so cannot be adjusted at any point so when mounting it just choose appropriate uh, section to have it uh, mounted places usually where we don't have um, changing scenes uh, the wider uh, changing scenes for the environment so alongside having it uh, the fixed lens so this supports different uh, video output since uh, it can support cv uh, cvi hd and tvi and cvbs uh, video output as well so this is an hdcv product that supports all these kind of video outputs so comparison between uh dawas and a different uh product um in terms of uh, its ingress protection this is highly protected against uh dust and water that is ip66 uh, the competitors are basically not that uh, well protected there's no waterproof into it so this product can be installed either in two different scenes, either an indoor scenes or an outdoor scenes, while the computer is basically meant for indoor scenes only. Uh, now we have, um, in terms of panning and tilting, we have different uh, angles that can support. 
So we have, in terms of panning, this will support up to a maximum of 356, um, 355 degree angle. And tilting, this will tilt up to 90% degree. So this is roughly closer to 360 uh, degrees. The competitors, this is the kind of the ranges that it provides. So let's move on to something uh, different now. Uh, the application scenarios where the PT series can be more suitable. So this can be placed in different areas, such as, for example, the villas, because of its um, wide monitoring. Supports a different wide dynamic ranges uh, in restaurants, in, uh, for example, parks, somewhere high in the parks, uh, because it can can pan into different degree angle like closer to 360 degrees then again the vertical uh, tilting can tilt up to 190 so 90 degrees that is so you can have uh, the airport lobbies inside we have retail shops we have even in offices so this product can be applicable in different scenes just to give you that wide um, dynamic view in terms of uh, its angle then again superior clarity that it comes. So you can choose between two megapixels and five megapixels uh, for resolution for your applications. Yes. Okay. So we have the HTC VI 1200 series. This is the entry level 1080 with high cost performance. So in this case, this 1200S6 uh, series comes with three major functions. That's the three DNR, the super adapt feature, and the long audio pickup distance that has been increased, maybe adjusted from the previous 1200S5 uh, series. So in this case, uh, this key, the key product to be uh, already has been updated, is and compared with this 1200S5 series. And uh, we have now the 1200 s6 that is uh, newly equipped with the 3d noise reduction the super adapt feature a feature that's basically the camera will be using to identify the scene it has been placed either it, if it's indoors or outdoors again be, depending on the lighting sources or maybe lighting condition the camera will adjust automatically just to give you that uh, better view depending on the two uh, scenes either indoor scenes or the outdoor scenes again then we have the long audio pickup distance. So we have a more audio range pickup that has been enhanced from the previous uh, S5 uh, version. So on the audio pickup, on the audio pickup, that we have so this supports uh digital audio over the coaxial cable technology uh, that enables transmitting of digital audio signal directly uh, over the coaxial cable and this case uh, relies a leap in audio pickup distance from five meters to eight meters that's a greater distance from the previous uh, version so in this case so since the digital audio over the coaxial basically goes through the coaxial cable the distance has uh, gone a little bit higher and this uh, since it supports the built-in mic um, built-in mic it can pick those specific audio uh, directly through the camera through the coaxial cable to um, the dvr connected to an audio uh, device just to ensure you that we have uh, the audible information from a projected device such as a speaker so then again because this again supports the because of this low noise uh, level of noise and distortion within uh, this particular product because of it uh, the 3d noise reduction and filtering of those and audible uh, agents Okay, 
So let's take a look at comparisons between uh, the different 1200, that's the, the entry level 1200 S5 and 1200 S6 um, view during the night, so for the outdoor environment. You can take a look at this. Uh, with this, this is a S5 series, this is a S6 series. In this case, you find that there is some richer detailed information on this S6 series compared to the S5 series. So in this case, we find that now this, we have some shades of noise projected or maybe highlighted on the display screens as compared with uh, this other end. So this gives some smoother or finer details during the night because of this 3D noise reduction technology just to filter out the unwanted signals um, from the camera. So for the indoor, this is the kind of output you're going to get between the two uh, products. You can take a look at these two. Uh, there's some noise that have been captured within the surrounding, but in this case, again, we have little or less noise when it comes to um, providing the images in black and white during the night again. So the entry-level products, we can see them here. Uh, the good thing is that uh, these entry-level products come with two types of lenses. We have the motorized varifocal lens and the fixed uh, lenses. So the fixed lenses, as we know by this time, that the fixed lenses cannot be changed or maybe altered in any way, but the varifocal lenses can be adjusted uh, from, let's say, for example, 2.7 millimeters to up to 12 millimeters. That's for the most motorized varifocal lenses. So those can be adjusted. Okay. So for the fixed lenses, it can either be 2.8 millimeters, 3.6 millimeters, 6 or 8 millimeters. Uh, in, in length. So we can take a look at this. This is a bullet. We have a dome here. We have an eyeball, two eyeballs with different features. So this is a motorized lens with a Z here to see to show that this is a motorized lens that supports audio. This supports dual power again, supports dual power uh, functions. This is a motorized lens supporting audio with dual power alongside this two other products. So when it comes to the fixed lenses, we have this kind of products here with um, lenses that cannot be altered at any point. So we have the bullets, we have bullets and a dome and, and an eyeball. We have multiple eyeballs at the bottom here. So uh, we have uh, from this set here, all this supports audio, inbuilt mic. Uh, this supports um, <clears throat> audio again. Now this 1200 TH I4 or IH, this is um, a 40 meter IR range and 80 meters IR range. Uh, this is at 60 meters, 60 meters IR. Let's focus on the Cooper series uh, whereby they're the most commonly used uh, products just for to give that um, the usual or basic perform uh, surveillance within different environments. So the Cooper series are based, um, are designed to meet the customer's basic requirements of uh, the full HD video surveillance at uh, high cost eff uh, efficiency. So in this case, they offer simple and high cost efficiency, effective uh, HDCV solution that meets the daily routine 24 hours, seven days a week, reliable monitoring with high image performance. Uh, since they are very cost effective, they save a lot of budget for customers on both devices and labor. So uh, if you're using the Cooper series products, they're basically going to guarantee the quality standards and uh, the major highlight for this Cooper series are basically uh, the all-round reliable monitoring, uh, simple and cost-effective. Then again, we have uh, guaranteed quality in terms of imaging uh, from the products. So the products come with different uh, different shapes and uh, different uh, casings. So we have um, bullets, metallic. And again, we have the plastic bullets. We have the domes. And again, we have the turrets. Looks more or less like an eyeball. 
So let's take a look at more features for these products here. So we have Cooper series products, uh, with different product models that comes with different uh, fixed lenses. So in, for example, we have these two. These are two bullets. <coughs> but one bullet basically comes with, uh, this is a bullet with a plus six fixed lens, first generation, five megapixels, and a third inch uh, sensor size. Now it compare with this, this is still a bullet just like what we have, but now this is basically a metallic fixed, with a metallic fixed lens. Uh, first generation, five megapixels, and the third inch sensor size. Uh, we have the domes, uh, for the, we have the plastic domes, plastic fixed lens. We have um, first generation, five megapixels, and a third inch sensor size. So these are five, gener uh, five megapixels, two megapixels. Uh, we have the turret, the turret ends. We have uh, turret uh, in nature. This is a plastic fixed lens, first generation, five megapixels, and again, a third inch size sensor size. That's basically going to allow enough light to the camera. So this is a tar another turret, but now this is a basically a metallic fixed uh, lens, metallic fixed lenses. So on these fixed lenses for this um, Cooper series, we have for two five megapixels and two megapixels uh, series. Now for more on uh, the varifocal lenses, on the manual varifocal and the motorized varifocal. So we have different types of shapes again. We have the bullet, we have the domes and the turret, similar to the motorized uh, varifocal lenses. So in this case now, this being a bullet, this would be a metal varifocal lens, the metallic, a metal varifocal lens, first generation, two megapixels, and uh, a third inch size a uh, sensor size and a varifocal at the end, the VF at the end. So all this. So this basically, this is a metallic fixed varifocal. Mm -hmm. This is a plastic yeah. um, varifocal yeah. lens, first generation, two megapixels, a I third inch it. sensor size with a varifocal uh, lens function. A turret similar to the domes and the bullets. When we come to the motorized lenses, so you find that this, again, we have a bullet that has a plastic varifocal lens, a dome that has a plastic varifocal lens, and a turret that has a plastic varifocal lens. So all these are basically first generations. And see from this A, the, then we have five megapixels and two megapixels, five megapixels, two, five and two. Then again, the size of the sensor is basically similar. That's a third inside sensor. Now we have a Z at the end of this product models. So this Z simply shows that this uh, product has a motorized varifocal lens. So this can be adjusted remotely. So this manual one has to be where the camera is and do some adjustments to uh, the camera again. So for this uh, motorized, the lens size can be adjusted from this millimeters to 12 millimeters. move on to something different than the active deterrence uh, products. So these active deterrence products are basically um, to ensure that we have that better secure, uh, secure in terms of our personal, personal and uh, the property with active deterrence and visual identification. So in this case, we have a warm light, that's basically maybe a white light is basically going to be used as a way of uh, fending off the intruders and uh, some audio for just communicating with the intruders. So Active Deterrence series provides multidimensional um, system that links with video and uh, video with audio information and alarm to verify the potential risks. So the EDIC camera can active actively one of intruders with the light and the siren, light and sirens. So um, and this light is not the color light, the blue and the blue and uh, the red light. So it's basically the white light just to ensure that it can get the intruder's attention and uh, fend them off completely. So at the same time, can alert users in real time 
with the uh, alarm over the coaction and provide the visual verification with the HDCVI uh, video itself. So this provides uh, high definition digital audio over the coaxial um, over the coaxial. So in this case, the three major key highlights for this activitarian series is uh, having uh, to one of the intruders. Uh, it supports the face information, then again can verify the alarm visually. So just in case let's say if connected through your mobile phone again through the DMSS application, uh, you can have those alarm visually projected to your mobile phone. So we have the different levels in terms of resolutions for these products. We have the 4K resolution, 5 megapixels, and 2 megapixels. And each of those resolutions comes with the different frames per second for better image quality and detailed information generated by uh, the product itself. So for the 2 megapixels, we have uh, 1239 series and 1200 series. So we have this uh, TIOC 2.0 just to show that this particular product is an active deterrence. Then we have 1509 and 1500 series alongside uh, the 4K resolutions with different frames per second, 4K at 15 frames per second and 4K at 15, 25 to 30 frames per second. So this can be adjusted either downwards or upwards again from the, um, the device connected to that particular camera. Let's take a look at some of the models that we have here for active deterrence. So in this case, based on these naming models for the product, the naming pro uh, models for the product, uh, we have, let's say, for example, HSC. That's basically a high definition, uh, maybe HDCVI uh, product. Uh, MA here is basically meant to, to show that that is an active deterrence uh, product. Uh, light series, 8 megapixels. We have first generation. And um, this is a function which is not that applicable. This is basically uh, the, um, the appearance of the camera, or maybe the casing of the camera with the PV at the end. So PV at the end basically is that to show that this is basically a TAOC camera that's basically going to give a different... Um, output in terms of maybe the light and the audio when it comes to warning of the intruders. So you have a different model here. Uh, ME again to show that that is a basically an active deterrence product. Uh, B, this is just a casing. Then we have LS to show that this particular product supports uh, white light and siren, white light and siren. So uh, what we have here as L for this product shows that that basically produces only, maybe uh, gives only the white light. D again here to show that this basically an active deterrence product. Uh, a B, this section again, just to show that that's basically an active deterrent bullet. Uh, this, all these are bullets. Um, we have this other product again, the eyeball show that's basically an active deterrence product, the TAOC uh, product again. So these are some of the products, active terrain products based on this uh, entry series that we have at this particular point. So for those who are asking for, the some still asking for the recorded training i'm going to share this training uh using um a channel that I've created so i'm going to share a link to that particular channel through the channel you're going to find out some more other training that were done previously done so you don't have to worry about this i'm going to share um the link here this particular group you can save it then you can be viewing those uh recorded trainings at your own time so let's just focus on this first of all. So for the active deterrence series, let's take a look at the specification comparisons for the products. 
we have the maximum resolution that's a 4k resolution that's the hmp with different uh, frames per second that support uh, real-time imaging uh, these products will have uh, the lowest maybe the minimum illumination just to ensure that during the uh, times where we have little or no light the pro uh, the product will still provide with you with uh, better image quality um go to noise reduction some for example this 1809 and 1800 will support the 2d noise reduction uh, this 2802 will support both but take advantage of the high elevated noise reduction feature for the 3d noise reduction so all this support the digital audio of a coaxial so more comparisons uh, these are going to share this file with you you're going to have some comparisons at your own time so let's take a look at the TAOC So with the TAOC 2.0, the term TAOC basically um, means a three-in-one camera, a camera that has three key features put into, uh, put into that camera all at once just to achieve um, different functions. And uh, with this TAOC camera 2.0, we support three key functions. Smart dual lighting. I believe everyone now understand the term smart dual lighting. Active deterrence and artificial intelligence, all these three key components into one particular uh, camera. So when it comes to the smart dual lighting, you have three modes and the default mode is usually the smart illumination mode. So uh, here I told that this smart illumination mode will actually be intelligently switching between the IR mode the white and uh, the white light when targets are detected within sections that have set some rules, either the monitoring area or the rule area again. Then we have um, the white light mode, which is optional. You can only turn it on. Um, yes, it can be turned on, but you can turn it on, let's say, for example, in places where you need the footages in color uh, formats. Then we have the IR. You can decide to choose uh, IR to be the default mode, only when you want to have uh, scenes that actually don't require any kind of supplementary white light just to facilitate those color imaging, okay? So in this case, enables or maybe reduces what we call the, uh, the light pollution, events where we have the white light and the IR mode light uh, on at the same time. So in this case, this is the default mode. And uh, in, the, in case of the different events that the camera has detected, it can switch between the IR and the white light mode again but one can switch maybe can select the white light on to be more to be on uh, just for them to ensure that either during the night or during the day it can be seeing those images in full color the ir only when you don't want to have instances of the images that uh, to be seen let's say for example in uh, color images but rather black and white so there's a scenario here just to help understand more on this uh, multiple illumination modes so uh, for the function to work properly you need to incorporate an intelligent xvr so with an ai function of the xvr camera supports will support the three field lighting modes ir uh, ir with the white light or the light uh, smart dual lighting at the same time so in this case I'll explain uh, based on these three frames that we have here. So um, during the night, let's say, for example, when there are no instances of, let's say, for example, uh, motion detected within the scene, uh, the camera will always be using um, the IR light. Now, once these particular users gets or maybe ends up into the monitoring area, uh, the camera then intelligently will switch between the IR, the white light, to facilitate uh, image 
capturing in color format. In color formats. Now, the individual is basically at the, the monitoring area only, so hasn't got into this rule area. Now, if the inventor intruder gets into this rule area, what will happen is that now the camera will activate the warning lights, that is the blue and red strobe lights, at the same time projecting an alarm sound. Okay, now this is what we call now the deterrence ability of this uh, camera when it comes to uh, intrusion. Now, once this individual gets outside the two sections, the rule area and the molten area, now the camera again automatically switches from the IR, uh, the white light to the IR mode. Just going back to uh, the black and white imaging, just like the first instance that we have here. So in this case, uh, the camera has the smart motion detection plus uh, feature, whereby it's basically a feature that can filter out uh, some non-essential uh, alarm triggers, leaving out only the human uh, filters, human filters, or for example, the vehicle filters. But at the same time, through the SMD detection of uh, the human intrusion, we have the red and blue light flashing and the siren alerts. Now in the event, let's say, for example, you're connected to this camera through your mobile phone's DMSS application, you're going to get those notifications um, in real time to your mobile phone. And that those notifications will be visual notifications at the same time. Okay, application scenarios for this active deterrence are KOC 2.0 camera. So in this case, we can have them at uh, different stores at different times of day or night. We can have some other customized um, voice forms. During the day, anyone gets to the intrusion area of uh, where we search at the entrance of your store, it can actually detect that this is a human being because of it has a smart motion detection plus feature. Then based on those customized voice forms, it can actually welcome the client. Uh, in other dangerous places, again, you can set different uh, custom voice prompts. For example, no entry. We have uh, at um, fire exits, uh, through the smart motion detection, you check that this is a human and this is a vehicle. And in the event a vehicle is parked at the fire exit, again, based on those customized voice prompts, you can notify the individuals that that is not a parking area. We have construction sites just uh, to avoid these uh, hazards. We can uh, can use the voice points just to allow the to notify the individual to keep out of those uh, scenes. Now, on uh, the accurate detection, uh, this is uh, basically going to be enhanced uh, through the smart motion detection as the same time combine, combining these cameras with an AIXVR. So with the smart motion detection, the perimeter protection features, we find that now um, the product can intelligently filter out some of the non-essential alarm triggers and keep them away. Let's say, for example, animals, leaves, rains, or some other elements such as the uh, rain. So uh, it filters out this because we don't consider this to be the true alarm triggers. We only consider uh, the humans and vehicles to be the true alarm fill, uh, triggers. So it will filter out the two, leaving out the other non-essential alarm triggers. So this can give us an accurate detection of up to 98%. Smart motion detection plus will provide 98%. And uh, some other smart motion detection 3.0 or smart motion detection 4.0 will end up producing a higher accuracy rate of up to 99%. Yeah, sure. Now we have uh, protection against red blue light interference. So in this case, 
and normally when the intruder gets into the intrusion area, the camera fends off the intruder by producing those red and blue lights at the same time with those alarm prompts. So, but on a display screen, you're not, you're not going to be seeing those red and blue lights simply because of this time sharing control image capture and the red and blue light flashing. And this is basically enabled by uh, its uh, CMOS imaging sensor. So that filters out these red and blue lights for you to get to see clear details about the intruders, uh, the intrusion areas. So this protects uh, the users from these red and blue light interferences on their screens to enable them to get to capture uh, better quality images uh, for from the intruders. So we have um, comparisons between the two different scenes, uh, but by having okay a similar scene but two different uh, products. One supporting two megapixels and the other supporting uh, 4K resolution. So during the day, this is what you'll end up uh, seeing. During the night, again, this is the same place you're going to end up seeing based on. Um, the 4K product. So 4K ultra high definition equals uh, four times uh, two megapixel uh, product and therefore 4K camera presents superior clarity with abundant uh, details either during the day or during the night again. So this is a similar scene to different um, times produced by one camera so during the let's say during the night just comparison between two different lighting modes the white light and the ir are light uh, by this 1801 active deterrence uh, product so when the white light is on you're going to get crystal clear imaging at the same time when the IR light mode is on. So in this case, between the two, the product, the camera is not providing, uh, has not been configured to use that default smart door lighting. So the user opted to have just the white line enabled, uh, leaving out the other scenes uh, modes. In this case, again, we have only the white light mode, the IR light mode only activated. So this is the kind of outputs you're going to get from two different scenes using two different illumination modes. So the active deterrence products, we have 1809, 1509, and 1239 uh, series, S2 series products. So this will come with different resolutions, 4K, 5 megapixels, 2 megapixels, they, they all support 3D noise reduction, all have inbuilt mic, and again, all have one channel alarm out interface. So you can connect to an external uh, siren. So we have the POC enabled product. And this POC are basically power of a coaxial series. They transmit both video and electrical power over a single coaxial cable. So this eliminates the need of having separate power cables, uh, power supplies, that is. So uh, HDCV POC technology further simplifies HDCVI deployment, mm -hmm. uh, system deployment, therefore reducing time and cost. So if compared this with the traditional uh, systems, whereby uh, if uh, you bought an XVR and some HD cameras, uh, you end up again buying, um, let's say, power adapters just to ensure that the cameras are powered separately. But with the POC technology, uh, we'll end up working more or less in a similar way uh, how the, uh, the POE uh, products work. So you only need to connect the POC enabled in, uh, XVR with the POC enabled camera using a single coaxial cable. That coaxial cable will carry power and data at the same time. 
So this will basically uh, lower the costs uh, of labor and some other purchases, let's say, for example, for uh, the power supplies and those AC or the DC uh, jacks. Yeah, apart from that, this POC series supports the power, uh, stable power supply that is a uh, uh, 12 volts power supply directly to the cameras, not going up or not going down again. Then again, operational safety for the users at the same time, operational safety for the products. So we'll take a look at all these three, um, the coming slides. So comparisons, I'm going to leave this um, with you. Take a look at them uh, when I share the product uh, file. So this is a system diagram for the two um, systems, the conventional system or the traditional system alongside the POC enabled system. So in this case, we have an XVR here connected to uh, this product, that's the uh, HD camera. So we have the cable connected together just for the data and audio, but again, we'll be forced to buy a separate, I mean, for example, just power this separately by connecting to a power supply. But on when it comes to the POC enabled systems, you just have to make sure the two components are POC enabled. Then again, use a single uh, coaxial cable. This coaxial cable will carry data. At the same time, we carry power um, directly to the cameras. So here you don't have to buy these other power adapters or the power supplies to power this camera. We just have a direct connection from the XVR to the camera. When it comes to cost savings, this is just an example of uh, how it saves uh, the amount of um, just different amounts, levels, amounts of uh, the cost, etc. So take a look at this. For example, this is an eight channel and POC um, device, and this is an eight channel POC device. So in terms of labor cost, the labor cost will actually go down completely 30% off. Similar comparison between 16 channel POC and 16 channel and POC. In terms of the labor cost, this is the reduction, almost uh, less than 30% off in terms of the labor cost, because here we're not going to be using the power supplies and again, having different power cables to power uh, the product. Then we have uh, the system stability. So on the conventional uh, systems, um, it doesn't actually provide the power with a stable 12 volts, be, depending on the different uh, power surges, find that the camera will be and uh, uh, will be provided with little or no less than 12, pass, uh, 12 volts. That's, for example, 9 volts because of different uh, power surges. Maybe we have a faulty power supply. But when it comes to, let's say, for example, the POC enabled devices, we find that it provides a stable DC, uh, DC voltage of uh, 12 volts from the camera. So it doesn't go up, doesn't go down because this is basically regulated by the product itself. So power is transmitted over the coaxial cable at high voltage and the input uh, for the camera is a consistent of 12 volts. And therefore the POC enhances the system stability and saves the feature maintenance cost of replacing power adapters, the power supplies, just to name, to name a few. On the operational safety, so in this case, uh, the POC technology ensures operational safety, the following protection strategies. One, auto identification and the quick power off. So in case of a uh, connection to the non-POC device or a short circuit in the cable, this HDCVI POC system automatically identifies the risk and cut off the power at once. So the this protects, protection prevents devices from being damaged and avoid injuring the installers. So since it only supports the POC enabled cameras, in the event, let's say for example, you're not aware that that's not a POC enabled camera and connected to the XVR, uh, the device quickly identifies that that is not a POC enabled camera and cuts off power to that channel connected to it. So at the same time, that will uh, protect against damaging the device and again, protecting the short circuit that could end up um, injuring 
uh, the installers or the person doing the installation at that uh, scene. So POC enable products, these are how they look like in terms of their, their naming models. Uh, we have a bullet here. This is its uh, casing, uh, supports audio. And again, have this POC extension to show that this supports the POC um, functionalities. So this can be connected to a POC enabled XVR. So we have, again, we have uh, the eyeballs, we have that supports audio, and again, they are POC enabled. The different, uh, different, um, different types of uh, casing here, most of them basically quick to install. We have, yes, all these are basically uh, POC enabled. So we take a look at this, for example, 1500th i8. So this shows that this basically supports uh, higher distance of 80 meters, supports audio, and again, the POC enabled. So these are for the fixed lenses. For the motorized varifocal lenses, uh, this is what we have. Uh, the bullets, eyeballs, and the domes. Uh, we have this Z to show that this is a motorized varifocal lens, audio, and again supports POC functionalities. Okay, POC functionalities. Oh, for this, uh, still on POC, uh, we have different uh, platforms, the light platform and the pro series platforms with different resolution types. So uh, this is practically not difficult to get to understand. We have the five megapixels for the light entries, all starting with a one, for the pro series, all starting with a two. Uh, these are motorized, does not support audio, motorized audio enabled POC. Uh, this again does not support audio, but it's basically a motorized POC enabled product. So for the two megapixels, we have um, uh, we have um, does supports audio with the POC enabled. The ones that POC enabled don't support audio. So we have different uh, varieties of products that I can choose from. So more to this with the fixed lenses. So the same case, the same thing again. I'll share you this. You can go through it um, slowly but slowly as your own at your own time. So let's take a look at the panoramic series. So these are the high-end series. So from the light series, we took a look at the pro series. Now let's take a look at the light entry at the entry. Sorry, the high-end uh, products. So. Um, The Panorama series as the high-end product category, uh, they're meant to solve the pain points in large scale monitoring scenes, saving device and labor costs while covering the whole area. So for instance, if you wanted to cover the wide areas, you find that you're going to have the need to use two to three, for example, cables to carry, uh, to capture the scenes within that environment. But having these panorama cameras eliminates the need for you to have multiple cameras. Just a single panorama camera will be in a position to ensure that it can cover that wide uh, area that you need covered using a single camera. So in this case, this series offers the fish eye camera and multi-lens cameras for different scenarios. So this can cover extremely wide angle with only a single camera. So the major key highlights, basically this covers large monitoring area. At the same time, uh, replaces those multiple cameras and again saves installations, time and cost when it comes to uh, doing, uh, maybe running the cables from one point to another point again. Oh. 
So for example, you have this um, multi-sensor camera, that's a high-end product, six megapixels, uh, first generation, and this supports a starlight uh, function. So in this case, this camera has three two megapixels uh, multi-sensors. So we have one two megapixels here, there's another camera, then on the other far end, we have another uh, lens. So through the use of these three lenses, you can achieve such an output, panoramic output. Okay, so this has um, 2.8 inch, two megapixels for graphics scan CMOS, uh, one panoramic view and three individual, uh, two more uh, megapixels video output simultaneously. So this supports uh, eight megapixels or four meg uh, 4K resolution at 15 frames per second. And again, if uh, it was a uh, four megapixels, it will support up to 25 frames per second. So when it comes to the wide dynamic range in terms of our uh, view, uh, this supports a uh, true 120 dBWDR uh, function, then supports both 2D and 3D noise reduction. So this is a HTC VI starlight technology in terms of our uh, low light illumination. Now the maximum air distance for this is uh, 20 meters. The product is uh, highly protected against dust proof and waterproof and again IK10 to show, suggest that that is basically going to be protected highly against uh, impact from uh, maybe fall. So this is the kind of view that this particular camera can produce uh, for you. So uh, we have more. For this multi-sensor panoramic IR bullet provides additionally flexible uh, flexibility for capturing wide area view, uh, video surveillance. Uh, then again, provides this real-time image splicing technology uh, with a camera that has three uh, two megapixel sensors working in tandem to create a comprehensive image. So this will provide that maximum 180 degrees view, and this replaces um, single sensor cameras to lower cost of installation and storage uh, space. So because we are only achieve, we are going to achieve this particular um, view simply because of the three lenses uh, capturing the data simultaneously. So uh, we have one lens on the far left, the middle lens and the one lens on the far right. So these particular lenses will give you this panoramic view. It's going to act as if this is one lens, but they have been stitched together just to ensure that it can provide this one wider angle view. Then from um, the multi-sensor cameras, take a look at this fish eyes uh, product models. So the fish eye, they're, only, they're best meant to give you that wide angle view uh, of around 180 degrees. So for this lenses pro produces uh, the curvilinear images of a large area while distorting the perspective in the angles of objects uh, in, the, in the image. So uh, though these uh, curvilinear images can be corrected just to ensure that we can clearly get some more details about the products uh, at our display screens. So we have EB, uh, EW2501 and EBW. Uh, 3802. So this is a pro product. This is a high-end uh, product. So installation displays and displays for this product, we have um, ceiling installation on the ceiling mount. We have a wall mount, and again, we have a ground mount. So uh, we have this, this kind of uh, installations, ceiling, wall, and ground. And the displays for each is basically going, the default one show this. Then you can alter the images by using this uh, uh, preset views. Let's say, for example, in this case, you're going to have one circular view. Uh, you can choose, let's say, for example, you can have one circular view plus more other um, corrected images on this other end again. So for the wall mount, we have the display mounts. We have these display mounts. 
and uh, this uh, sorry the installation mount mode and again the display uh, display images that can be corrected ground mount the same case again uh, then we have uh, the last section of uh, today's uh, tr uh, presentation where we have the micro size uh, series so these micro size series are basically those uh, small cameras that's basically meant to solve uh, different pain points in specific applications such as uh, the ATMs and uh, for invisible monitoring situations or maybe environments. So you just um, have them mounted in places where they cannot be easily traced by other individuals. So this provides uh, various options for scenarios that require small size cameras they're very compact design, looks friendly to environment and avoids bringing annoyance uh, places where they've been put. So in this case, main key highlights uh, provide that labor and cost saving abilities, stable power supply, and again, provide that operational safety. So in this case, let's take a look at more of these products. Mm -hmm. So you have the micro size products and the different models. So all this comes with uh, fixed mm -hmm. lenses. So this is a HAM, the HDCVI, high definition. Uh, UM is basically to show that this is a pinhole camera or a miniature camera, um, high end product, two megapixels, uh, first generation. Then we have a starlight feature. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this B show that this is still a pin of camera. And mm -hmm. take a look at this. This is a dome through an eyeball mm -hmm. that's basically giving these features with a micro sized uh, bullet or a dome or a box again. So this is another eyeball. We have uh, a dome. That's metallic. That's basically a metallic wedge dome by this F uh, feature here. And uh, again, we have um, a pinhole. That's basically um, a PAR cube. So this comes with the different uh, sizes for the lenses. This 2.8 millimeters. This can support 2.8 to 3.6 millimeters. These are 2.1 millimeters. 2.8 millimeters and 2. Point. So in this case, in short, this uh, the products seem a little bit smaller, but they're going to give you a wide angle view. So this is more information to this PR uh, products, the high performance uh, products. They have um, a long illumination distance of up to 10 meters and support capture clear images even in dark uh, rooms again. So the PA cameras that supports yeah. uh, this other different function. Oh, it has even a super added function. So this can automatically adjust parameters to provide optimized image performance depending on the scene the camera is installed. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, performance, you can take a look at uh, the differences here. So this is under low, low light condition and bright condition. So low light conditions, you're going to have this kind of image, though it has some scenes of uh, noise uh, in the background. This is an uh, a lit environment, bright condition environment. This is the kind of output it's going to produce or maybe provide. So on um, performance again for the indoor scenes, this is a places where, for example, low light condition, the lights have been switched off and that provides these clear black and white images. For brighter conditions, this is the scene, or maybe what the camera will produce um, for you. So you have the product casing for the PAR um, with the camera. So you can see we have paired with the camera here. So in the invalid frame of any kind of motion, uh, this camera will be activated to start capturing uh, the details. So 
So this is uh, the last part of uh, today's uh, presentation training. Just introduction to these HTCVA products. These HTCVA products based on the many products that we have introduced diff, uh, on the different uh, product platforms, the light series, the pro the professional products and the high entry products with different resolutions given different uh, frames per second and some of the different features for this uh, product. So on comparisons uh, between um, Dawa's product and competitors based on uh, the power stability and performance in the power fluctuations, um, I didn't factor that into today's presentation, but in the future presentations, I'm going to cover um, power stability on both uh, ends. What was captured today is basically uh, in terms of image quality between the two uh, companies, Dow companies and the competitor company. Power stability, I'll make sure that I include that in the future uh, classes. So um, Amos and the rest, for those who want to have the link shared with them, make sure that you drop your email address here so that I can have them included with the other email addresses. So um, there's this guy uh, by the name administrator asking about the IP series uh, form that can run comfortably with less um, data package without lagging. I'll suggest that you go with, let's say, uh, we sense two, series two and series three. From series three onwards, they're going to provide you with a better uh, performance. So we are more than 22 participants here, but uh, I'm receiving less uh, email addresses. So make sure that you include your email address part of this uh, chat so that I can incorporate your email address with the rest for you to get to have the presentation shared uh, with you. So the class has ended. If uh, at all you've um, yeah. dropped your email address there, you can exit. We don't have um, any more info to provide. As long as you've let your um, drop your email address, you're free to exit the chat group and uh, the meeting as well. So if that's all, allow me to exit everyone at the same time so that we can do something else um, aside. Thank you for being part of today's training and I'm hoping again to find more time to invite you for more trainings. We learn together and um, share the knowledge base with everyone. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.